Um, first of all, I want to start by saying thank you very much for giving me this opportunity today. Uh, I must say, however, that I didn't like some of the limitations that you set for this 10 minute thing. Uh, like you don't allow group acts for some reason, uh, which means me and my friends won't be performing a scene from our show, 9-11, the musical. Um, it also said no animals allowed, which is also a real bummer, because for the finale, I wanted to bring an elephant on stage, climb into his mouth, into his stomach, and stick my head out of his asshole. Uh, <clears throat> you're missing that, is all I'm saying. <clears throat> But anyway, I would of course be incredibly honored to open for the great Dylan Moran, who I have never heard of until I decided to do this. <clears throat> I didn't even know they had stand-up comics in Ireland, and I'm really curious about this guy, Ireland's most popular stand-up comedian. Because let me tell you something about Ireland. I don't know if you've been there. Ireland is really fucking boring. <laughs> they have two colors in Ireland, green and blue. If you're not excited about either one of these two colors, you're shit out of luck. Uh, Ireland's chief export is soul-crushing boredom. And I've been, I've been to Ireland five times when I was a kid. My parents made me go there. All you see there is grass. And if you're lucky, maybe a river or a sheep sometimes. And the little towns, whenever you manage to find one, they're all like this. <coughs> pub, restaurant, pub, supermarket, pub, pub, butcher, pub, derelict house, church, pub, pub. Uh, so, you know, we better get ready for some sheep and Guinness-based humor on October 1st. <clears throat> uh, but luckily, I'm a grown-up now and I can go wherever I want. So, whenever I can, I go to the United States. I love America. And the number one thing I love about America is their food. It is just the best food I've ever eaten in my life. I could not live in the US. I would just eat all the awesome shit and die after like a month. Uh, at the end, it would look like uh, Chow the Hutt. You know, that fat monster from Star Wars? You would do bad. And, and uh, when I would have died, it would look exactly like when Jabba died, you know. <laughs> uh, I love to eat more than I love sex, really. Uh, eating is like an orgasm in your mouth and it lasts for 30 minutes instead of only a few seconds. So, you know, I've gotten really fat and I, I just keep getting fatter. And one thing that is not good for me at all is the fact that you can very easily order food online now. You don't even have to look for a menu from the mailbox or talk to another human being uh, on the phone anymore. Now you have a website. On this one website you can order pizza, sushi, Chinese, Austrian, Indian, whatever you want. And they save your address and credit card information. So, you know, all you have to do is click, click, and 30, 40 minutes later, some guy brings you food right to your door. Uh, and they have apps for that too now on your cell phone. And the app makes it even easier. So uh, a lot of days uh, I wake up, I masturbate, and I lie in bed for two hours doing nothing. I eventually get hungry, you know, and I grab my cell phone, tap, tap, okay, back to sleep. And 30 minutes later the doorbell rings and I'm like, oh shit, he's here, now I have to put on pants. So <clears throat> uh, I order a lot of food online and like a lot of single men, I'm living a very unhealthy lifestyle. Uh, speaking of unhealthy, did any of you uh, ever read a, a book on nutrition and nutrition physiology? Uh, those books, they all come to the same conclusion, that you shouldn't buy anything from a supermarket. Not meat, not vegetables, nothing. <laughs> they say you should grow your own food and buy from local farmers. Who the fuck does that? Digging a garden, planting seeds, watering, harvesting, drive outside of the city, visit farmers and buy meat from them. Drive back, cook for an hour, put a whole meal together. Here's what I do. When the doorbell rings, I open the door and I take the food. I ain't got time for all that shit. I want to sit on the toilet with my cell phone and play Plants vs. Zombies for an hour. I also never buy a, a loaf of bread. I only buy, you know, sliced bread. Like, I'm gonna take the bread and the knife and do this. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, so I thank the Americans for their awesome food. And I also uh, thank them for their awesome movies. Uh, for about a hundred years now, the Americans have been the best at making movies. And I'm a real uh, film fan. And uh, like every hardcore film fan, I only watch movies in their original language. No dub movies. I hate dub movies. And now I've had this discussion with several different groups of film fans, and we always agree, everybody agrees, that we hate dub movies. But there's always one guy in these discussions who says, well, dub movies aren't all bad. Just think of the Bud Spencer and Terrence Hill movies. Well, 
Hey, okay, the, the German dubs of the Spencer and Hill movies are hilarious, I'll give you that. But saying that dub movies aren't all bad because of the Spencer and Hill movies is like saying the Nazis weren't all bad because they built the Autobahn. <laughs> They're still pretty fucking bad, is what I'm saying. Um, Got a brain freeze too now. Um, uh, I love movies. Um, <clears throat> I was in a movie theater in LA once and I watched The Expandables Part 2, you know, the action movie with uh, Sylvester Stallone, Chet Lee, Jean Claude Van Damme, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And uh, even before the movie started, people everywhere in this LA theater uh, were doing Schwarzenegger impressions. You know, you, everywhere you heard people going like, I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger, the greatest movie star in the world, I'm going to kill a lot of bad guys, come with me if you want to live. And this one group of people, they were uh, competing against each other who could do the best Schwarzenegger impression. And it looked like fun, so I joined in. You know, I sat next to them and um, I, I went like, Predator, kill me, what are you waiting for, I'm right here, come on, do it. Get to the chopper. You're not sending me to the cooler, Batman. Go ahead and give these people air. <laughs> and um, I got to talk some more to some of the guys after the movie. Americans are very open people. And this one guy says to me that he's a vegan. Except he didn't say, I'm a vegan, like a normal person would. He said, I am part of the vegan community. Now, but now, I'm sure you can tell that I love America and Americans, but there are a couple of things that piss me off about uh, American culture or Americans in general. And one thing I don't get at all is the whole community thing. You know, there's the black community, the gay community, the online community. What is this shit? Millions of people are black, gay, or online. You're not special. I'm part of the lesbian community. Please tell me how that works. Do you greet other lesbians on the street and say, oh, hello, fellow lesbian? <laughs> Do you have meetings once a week with bagels and coffee and form a circle? Yes, yes you do? Yes, that is awesome. Denise, right? Yes. Do you consider yourself part of the lesbian community? Of course I do. Yeah, so you have meetings once a week with bagels and coffee and you form a circle and show each other your pussy. Well, what is happening here in these lesbian communities? That's what I want to know. You tell me later. And another shit thing the Americans started is the whole sensibility about diversity in the workplace that is some time ago swapped over to Europe as well. Like uh, in uh, commercials for a company or on a company's homepage, you know, you have all these good looking people smiling at you. And there's always two of uh, you, uh, the, the company really wants to show you that they embrace diversity. So there's always two or three white folks, and then you have to have at least one black or one Asian guy in there. Better make that one black and one Asian. Yeah, that's diversity, yeah. Because of course, real diversity comes from people who look different. Racist dumbasses. <laughs> and um, Americans also by far the most sue happy nation on the planet. They sue everybody. I am going to sue them. Nowhere in the manual does it say that you cannot dry your cat in the microwave. I believe I'm entitled to a sizable financial compensation for the emotional trauma I have experienced over my cat exploding in the microwave. And, you know, so the American companies, they're all afraid of the lawsuit, so they make these ridiculous warning labels like, and this is true, uh, on one American t-shirt it said, caution, do not iron while wearing shirt. Can you imagine a guy standing there going like this? I thought this would be much quicker. But now I see I have second to third degree burns all over my upper body. It hurts so bad I want to kill myself. Uh, Facebook was also invented by Americans. I love Facebook. Ever since I was a little kid, I thought, wouldn't it be great if I could show everybody who is not in the room with me at this very moment how awesome I am? And now you can. By the way, uh, I love how porn sites, and again, I'm not making this up, internet porn sites now have Facebook share buttons under every video. <laughs> Come on. Has, has anyone ever used those? Like, you know, after jacking off, some guy's going to be like, Whoa, that porn clip made me come really good. I have to share this on Facebook. That Mitchell is an incredible buttfucker. He destroyed that ass. I must show this to my, my friends. Colleagues, girlfriend, parents, grandparents, my aunt, my underage nephew, everyone should see this midget butt-fucking the shit out of that girl. 
That was even better than 1001 Ways to Eat My Cheers, Part 3, Biscuits and Gravy Edition. Uh, men, for some reason, never admit to watching porn, but of course everybody does it, and I watch porn too, but I, uh, I, pre I prefer the real thing. I love women. I love how they have a different uh, set of sensibilities about all kinds of things, and I love how they respond to things on an emotional level. I also love how they have tits. Uh, but when it comes to relationships, you know, sometimes I find myself, myself thinking, hmm, man, women are all fucked up in the head. Wouldn't it be great if I was gay? Now sure, there are a couple disadvantages to being a gay dude. Uh, I mean, first of all, you're down from three holes to just two. So there's a big drop in variety right there. You might say a big drop in diversity. <laughs> now, that's the kind of diversity I can get into. Um, but here's what's fascinating to me though. If you're gay, you can totally ignore half of all people. Because, you know, men like to hang around with other men. <coughs> Sorry. Do men stuff. All their best friends are other men. Whoa. What's happening? They want you off the stage. Maybe it's a yeah. sign. I don't know. Does it, does it work? No, it doesn't. Okay. I'll give you mine. Okay. This better not happen on October 1st. <laughs> I'm wrapping up. Okay. You know, men like to hang around with other men, do men stuff, all their best friends are other men. Uh, but then they think to themselves, well, I don't really like hanging out with women, but I guess I should make friends with some of them because I really want to stick my penis in their vagina, mouth, and ass. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> but if you're gay, though, to half of the entire population, you can just say, oh, fuck off, I don't need you. Uh, but I don't get being gay as a guy, because women are, objectively speaking, more beautiful than men. They are just far more attractive than us. And women are, objectively speaking, more aesthetically pleasing than men. Why do you think so many women have lesbian experiences in their lives, or even the whole lesbian face? And men, on the other hand, have significantly less same-sex encounters. And it's not a cultural thing, it's not because society doesn't allow it, it's because men are gross and generally don't want to fuck each other. <laughs> I know I don't want a gay experience. I would rather have sex with an animal than with another dude, even like a small one if I had to, like, I don't know, a dog or anything. I would, I would rather rape a cat than play either pitcher or catcher with another man. And that's all the time I'm gonna take from you, so I will leave you now with the image of me raping a cat. Thank you very much. <laughs>